we came up with this idea to create an immersive OSINT training platform. And what it, it's set up like a storyline. So we pick key areas that might use OSINT. Needlestack, the podcast for professional online research. I'm Aubrey Byron, a producer and your host for today. And I'm Shannon Reagan, fellow Needlestack producer and co-host. Aubrey and I are taking over the podcast again for another book club episode. Uh, if you'll recall, at the end of season one, we did an episode on We Are Bellingcat and This Is How They Tell Me The World Ends. Uh, both great reads, highly recommend. Uh, but today is something special. Today we actually have the author of the book we're going to discuss in the guest seat today. We're joined by senior OSINT analyst, co-founder of Case Scenarios, private investigator and author Ray Baker, who recently released her first book, Deep Dive, Exploring the Real World Value of Open Source Intelligence, which I have here. Oh, Ray, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I have your book in hand, which is chock full of resources for open source researchers and covers everything from social media to financial intelligence to transportation. What made you want to write this book to start us off? Um, I, I wanted to provide some sort of like entry level text for people who are looking to get into OSINT. Um, there are a few OSINT books out there and they're great. But they're a little intimidating, I think, for beginners, um, people just starting. And frankly, I wanted to include transportation because that's kind of my thing. And a lot of them do not have that. So I wanted to cram that in there somewhere. Awesome. Um, I know it's probably difficult in an ever-changing environment like OSINT to have things in print. How did you uh, think about what you would include um, as far as just like the longevity for people reading it. Yeah, I was very strategic about what I put into the book because I didn't want it to be obsolete by the, by the time it hit the shelves. So I focused mostly on methodology and like the why, why are you doing this? And then how can you find it? And maybe like how you pivot to the next thing um, because that's what OSIN is. It's being curious, creative, thinking how to to get from one piece of data or information to the next. So by focusing on that, I feel like I hopefully will not date it as soon as it, <laughs> it, it comes out. Um, and then if you have those basics, any tool should, I mean, you can apply any tool to that. Yeah. Uh, I was also, I was reading your blog recently and I'm, the book is the same. You're just a great writer. It's easy to understand and digest, like really <laughs> complex you. information. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, My mom always otherwise... said that. I never believed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. Um, yeah, it's just, it was really easy to follow. Um, so I think if you uh, have been in the OSINT world for a long time, there's still lots of great information that you'll gain out of it. Um, but if you're just starting, it is um, a good way to, to get your feet wet uh, and kind of go like one step at a time. Um, so speaking of your blog, you have also been uh, a leader in the OSINT community for a long time. Uh, you've gained prominence in this space, uh, in maritime in particular. I'm curious, how did you kind of end up in transportation and maritime intelligence? Uh, I, I fell into it. <laughs> a lot of this, I feel like, <laughs> was right place, right time situations. Um, I had started going back to school and I was looking for things to talk about, things to put myself out there online. Um, Cause you know, you want to present yourself as an expert and uh, get people to notice you to, to get a job. So I started writing blogs and I would pick a topic that I wanted to know more about. I would throw it into a blog and I'd try and teach through the blog uh, myself and whoever else wanted to read it, but I didn't really expect anybody to read it. Uh, concepts. So, you know, I did a few and they were mostly cyber related and I was looking for something new and I saw somebody and I don't remember who it was posted something about maritime and like tracking vessels. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I wonder what you can do with OSINT. So I wrote a blog 
and it took off more than I expected it to. And like, I, I feed on that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'll write another one. <laughs> so I wrote another blog and I just, it just kind of picked up from there. And like now uh, people consider me like a maritime SME and they come to me about boat stuff and I, I try to do my best. <laughs> I think maritime SME is the best kind of SME to be. <laughs> I like to fame. think so. <laughs> yeah, I that whole chapter was fascinating. And I wanted to ask, you know, what are some of the applications for those who aren't um, familiar with maritime? What are some observations that you've had from things you've monitored too? So a lot of it is geopolitical, obviously. Um, We see that now with China and Russia and Ukraine and all of that. And the Suez Canal, stopping shipments, um, all of that is very integral to us and other countries. Um, If ships get stuck somewhere or a ship gets sunk or there's some kind of like political issue that stops traffic, all of that has a ripple effect to like every other (laughs) <laughs> every other country, basically. Um, mm-hmm. So that's how it affects all of us. And then in the cyber realm, um, they're like floating uh, ICS uh, construction. So like on the ship, there's it's like a system of systems and mm-hmm. you can hack a computer, you can hack a ship, um, you can watch how it moves, you can track it if you're a another country, we wouldn't want them to track our vessels, obviously. So monitoring like what kind of access people have to vessels and information and data and the systems is very integral. I mean, I would, I would argue to everyone, but (laughs) at least to the, to, to cyber. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, fascinated to, I hadn't, you know, been privy to this space before, but I think you mentioned, you know, that uh, you know, maritime intelligence or like, you know, researching ports, you know, it's not uh, inherently sexy, but there's just a ton going on there. Like it is where world trade happens. It's where drug trafficking happens. Um, it's just, you know, I think of all the like heist movies that I've seen that have, you know, had a scene <laughs> on a port. Like this is still where a lot of like shady stuff goes down and like using OSINT to shed light on that. I think it's just really fascinating. And there is just a ton of information out there to be to be gleaned. So, oh, for cool. sure. I mean, if you think of a port, you're thinking like, oh, a few ships pull in, but they're they're like cities. I yeah. mean, there there's companies there, there's people there, there's different uh, like uh, jobs. People, mm-hmm. thousands of people <laughs> work at these ports, like the bigger ones. Yeah, and and you got to think of how much cargo comes in in a day, and yeah. then you have the the cranes, you have the the systems that are connected to the internet that like park ships automatically, Mm. um, all sorts of little systems there. Yeah. Lots of places for things and people and threats to hide. Yes. Um, speaking of this topic, there are, you know, the book is, is a good resource. It does, you know, focus on this a bit. Um, I think there's also just some great takeaways, like in your blogs, um, there were some great posts on like just kind of the fundamentals of OSINT research for maritime intelligence, um, go-to sites, breaking down like the terminology to be aware of, the type of information that you can find, the basics of how these things operate. Do you have, you know, for our listeners, either as a teaser for the book or just good information, any baseline tips for people that are in OSINT but might, might, might be new to maritime intelligence? A lot of maritime intelligence um, that I do anyway is uh, finding an area, an area that you're interested in, whether you know, you have a project in that area and you're looking at something specific or you're just kind of poking around to figure out what you can see. You find an area, you monitor it a little bit over time, or if you have historical data, you look back over time, what has Mm -hmm. gone on, who has arrived, who has left, what cargo has come, what cargo has left, has there been any issues there? And then you weigh it with what you're seeing now. So if a certain ship has never been to that port, or even in that region of the world, and then all of a sudden they're there, that would be of interest. I would want to know why. And mm-hmm. it might not be nefarious, but those are the the anomalies that I'm, I'm generally looking for. Yeah, it seems like there's great parallels to the cyber world in terms of like, you know, these things could be innocuous, they could be innocent. Yeah. Um, but in combination, like what is the context of all this going on together? It's really cool. 
you do talk about a lot more OSINT subjects than transportation intelligence. I want to make sure just in case. <laughs> no, that's not someone's bag. But, uh, you know, and and also just talking about where to find information through it, what you can glean from a social media page, maybe in places people don't realize. Um but you also talk about OSINT in general, and in the book, you describe it as a passive intelligence. Can you tell us what you mean by that? So passive uh, like reconnaissance or intelligence means you're not actively touching a system. So if you are a pen tester, you're going into the system and seeing what you can see. I'm looking from afar. I don't want people to know I'm there. I'm just observing. So mm -hmm. I would not take a password and log in. I might collect a password and I might present it in a report, but I'm not using that password to log in and see what is available to me. Um, I think that's the key difference. I'm not interacting. I'm not contacting people on the phone like an investigative mm -hmm. journalist would. Um, I am just looking for the data and then presenting what I find. Could you speak a little bit more on any other safeguards that you take while your research when you don't want people to know who's looking around? <laughs> sure, I use uh, all of the all of the good ones: VPNs, uh, virtual machines. Um, I use sock accounts, which are you know, fake accounts that you use to monitor um, groups and people online and kind of look around on social media. Um, those are the key ones that I use to, mm -hmm. to kind of protect myself. I don't announce that I'm around. <laughs> I, yeah. I try to, I try to hide in the background. Yeah. Right on. Um, another subject I wanted to touch on, uh, we talk a lot on the show about kind of the nature of OSINT and that it's slowly kind of gaining steam against the other ends or the perception of it is, is changing, um, and kind of gaining clout alongside them. Uh, who do you think could really benefit from this book, either, you know, being in other ints or new to OSINT? Uh, I guess who's your target audience for this? Uh, I When I wrote this, I was trying to write a book that I would have wanted when I started. Like something, I tried to keep it super simple, um, present the, you know, the why. Here's the thing, maritime intelligence. Mm -hmm. Why do we care about maritime intelligence? Well, here's why. What can we do with that information? This is what you can do. How do we collect that? Here's how you collect it. So I tried to like break it down in steps. And then I do give some tools here and there um, that have been around for a while that hopefully will not disappear. I talk a lot about Twitter in there and that, that kind of like went up in the air for a while. And I was like, oh, but yeah, I tried to break it down. And the audience for the book is, of course, beginners. I want somebody to be able to pick it up and just get into OSINT right then. Mm -hmm. um, but also there is a lot of stuff for intermediate levels and even like advanced. I would say that there are not many maritime intelligence uh, documents out there for the public. Um, mm -hmm. And if there are, please send it to me because I don't have it. <laughs> So I wanted to I wanted to include things like maritime. I include uh, rail. Rail is super important. I mean, mm -hmm. the military all over the world uses rail to to bring things into their bases and out of bases, and you know, shipping. It's super just as important as maritime. Um, mm -hmm. And I included uh, automobiles and flight tracking as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of that kind of stuff is new to a lot of people and exciting. And then you have the, the current event stuff, social media, disinformation, misinformation, um, dipping your toe in a little bit of everything to see maybe what you're, what you're into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a journey. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Another chapter I found really fascinating was the uh, chapter on critical infrastructure, which actually kind of overlaps with the book we talked about. This is how they tell me the world ends uh, by Nicole Perloff. <laughs> Um, yeah, I found some of the OSINT application for that really fascinating. And it, it crosses over with a lot of the transportation because they are considered critical infrastructure, like rail mm -hmm. and, and, uh, ports and things that they're very integral. So, um, 
being able to understand that you can go on to Shodan or just the internet and <laughs> Google a certain system. Like for an, for an example, if you knew a port and, and you wanted to find out maybe what technology they have at the port, I mean, you could easily Google it, look on their website, maybe find a hint of what they use. You can go find the manual for it. You could sometimes find like the full manuals and layouts for all of the systems that are at these these ports or on these ships or on these trains. And I mean, there's a lot you can do with that if you're an adversary. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we wrap up, I want to highlight another project of yours, which is Case Scenarios. I had the opportunity to demo it. It's an immersive OSINT training experience. And I was really blown away, um, not just by the sort of opportunity for how you can practice OSINT tradecraft or learn OSINT tradecraft if you're new to it, but um, also just that it was very fun. Uh, I'm a little (laughs) bit of a gamer, and so it was a very video game-like experience. Um, Can you tell us a little about how you developed this tool and uh, what kind of feedback you received? Sure. So Case was kind of born of the fact that so many people go through OSINT training or not even are looking for OSINT training and can't find it. Or if they do go through the training, they finish the training and then they're like, okay, (laughs) now what, (laughs) what do I do with this? How do I apply it? You know, where do I practice? What do I do? So we came up with this idea to create an immersive OSINT training platform. And what it, it set up like a storyline. So we pick key areas that might use OSINT, so investigative journalism, uh, like a detective, and we put you in the shoes of the lead role. So the one that I gave you access to is called Dark Waters, and you are playing an investigative journalist, and you're trying to solve the mystery of this town, Glen Rock, in Pennsylvania. And we ask you OSINT questions along the way. So it's super interactive. There's lots of video, um, audio, photos. Like I'm outside taking pictures of like things in the dirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like I, I'm a graphic designer before OSINT. So like I, I tried to meld that in there a lot. And uh, I think that it does a good job of allowing people to play around with these skills and kind of test them out see if they like it. Um, They get to feel what it's like to be maybe an investigative journalist or a detective or or any of those roles. And it has, unlike a capture the flag, you know, you go on and you can play a capture the flag uh, event. There's a stakeholder in case. So a boss is giving you a task or, you know, a friend is giving you a task and you have to accomplish something versus like, here's a question, here's another question completely unrelated to the first one. Hmm. So you're building on the last question to the next question, you're building the story, it's progressing and you're solving the case or whatever it may be in that scenario. And then at the end, cool, you win, you get a badge and you can play another one, hopefully. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it took me a minute to realize when I hit the first set of questions that it's using real world information. This is a real town. Um, yep. A lot of the things are out there on the internet and that's where you're going to find your answer. So you really are performing OSINT rather than sort of just, as you would say, like reading about it and hoping you retain all that information for later. <laughs> yeah. And and people really like that, actually. We got a lot of feedback on how we did the the town because you're down on the ground like searching around through the town and and it's really cool yeah walking around google earth and some yeah. to find a mural in some points um it did I, I mentioned i play games it reminded me a lot actually of a game i really like called her story which is like yep. a live action puzzle <laughs> have you played yeah, it i, I was I like I her wonder, story <laughs> I yeah it is very much know. like her story and and the idea is that eventually once we make a few, you know, production moves moves along and we can get real actors and and real audio actors to do do the roles in it so it feels even more immersive. That's awesome. Yeah, it's if anyone's not familiar, it's sort of a live action puzzle game where you search video archives by transcript to solve a mystery and um yeah, if you've already played case scenarios and like them, you might check it out. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, the, I liked uh, her story a lot. <laughs> same. I got the demo of the demo um, from Aubrey earlier, and I was like, this is so cool. Is there <laughs> anything else like this, like of this quality? Or just, you know, I feel like this type of training, OSINT training, like you said, is hard to come by, let alone in like a pleasurable game-like atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. Like it's fun. And I'm a huge true crime nerd. <laughs> like I've seen like probably everything. And so <laughs> I, I put that, a lot of that in there too. We have a free one that's coming out. Mm -hmm. um we're releasing it soon it's going through beta testing now but it's awesome. called betrayal and you're you're playing a private investigator who's trying to help the da solve a murder and it's very like if you've seen the staircase mm -hmm. it's very similar to that and some more news recent news stories that have been out yeah oh uh yeah. well I'll have to put that on my calendar for when it comes out. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be sure to link uh, to anything that uh, people can sign up for in the show notes. So should be sure to check those out. Um, I did just want to ask, you know, you've written a whole book on the topic. Uh, if you could boil it down, what are three things that you would want people to know about the book or that they could learn from reading this book? Oh, wow. Just three things. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, we won't cut you off at a hard three. If you go to four, <laughs> well, first of all, that it, it's not just for beginners. Um, I I I want to put that out there because it sounds like it's very accessible for for just beginners, but it does cover a lot of things that that could help intermediate levels and advanced levels. Um, second, I went I I did as much as I could to make it accessible, and I had a few people actually point out to me that. They noticed that I used she instead of he for all the examples, which I, I never told anybody that I did that, but <laughs> I was glad people noticed that I did that. Um, I tried to represent women as, as much as I could within the book um, and make it accessible, break down topics um, and kind of push you off to go like do extra research to get into get into the stuff that you like to do as you're reading the book. I think so. In a rare uh, all-female episode of Beetle Stack, um, thank you for <laughs> using she as the main pronoun in this book. Well, it's such a stupid, simple thing. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was starting to write it. I'm like, he, no, why am I putting he? <laughs> so I, yes, out of spite, I just put she. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, um, thank you again so much for joining us, Ray. Um, if you are interested, please pick up Deep Dive. It looks like this. Uh, and is out as of May 9th, so you can go get it today. Um, if you liked what you heard, you can view our transcripts and other episode info on our website, authentic8.com slash needlestack. That's authentic with the number 8.com slash needlestack. And be sure to let us know your thoughts on Twitter at needlestackpod. And to like and subscribe wherever you're listening today. We will be back next week and we'll talk more about OSINT as always. We'll see you then. Thanks for having me. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.